Okay, well, this is going to be an interesting test. Um, I only have one monitor right now, so I can't really see uh, what I'm doing at the same time as I'm doing it. Um, so I'll have to get a second monitor soon to try that out. Um, I also can't see the chat for the exact same reason, um, because I do have my work window open, so I can actually check dimensions and things like that. Um, so. Uh, if you ping the chat, I probably will see it, um, but it'll probably take a little while. So I'm just going to work, and we'll see how this works out. Um, hopefully there's nothing too crazy that happens. Mostly it's going to be cutting foam, uh, checking some dimensions, and if people tune in a little bit later, um, then I might do a little bit of a walkthrough of the script so people have an idea of what functionality there is and what you can really make with this program. It is available on Hackaday. So this won't matter right now. There's no one probably watching this, but if you'll watch a recording, uh, you can go to Hackaday and you can look up a bike frame builder um, and it should show up. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna need Rhino and Grasshopper um, six and up. Um, it does work with Rhino seven, but essentially the script is a geometric configurator where you can input a bunch of uh, variable conditions usually found by copying another bike frame. And then you can modify it from there. You can input your tubing size and diameter, uh, various dimensions. And uh, from there, you can start to calculate like intersection points and what you need to cut and where you're gonna cut it. And the idea is that you can cut a bunch of foam and then glue it together, uh, insert some other composite components and then wrap the frame in carbon fiber, Kevlar, some combination, uh, probably some fiberglass too, if there's any metal intersection points, and it will eventually create a viable bicycle frame. I try to make this as easy as possible. So I'll do a little scroll around so you can actually see what we're gonna be building today. Um, so this is the frame. It's based off of a Surly uh, STR, I believe, or SCR. Um, there's some modifications with the spacing in the rear um, just because of the tubing that we're using things like that which really in this case is actually be square sections uh, we're using inch and a half thick uh, foam core or foam uh, pink foam and then we'll cut it into inch and a half square strips and then we'll cut it down to size from there the grasshopper script is over here and it's huge um, there's a bunch of modules essentially, but the main things you got to concern yourself with are these primary variables over here. Um, this is meant for an inch system, so you can change like the seat post length, the seat angle, chain stay, um, and this will effectively uh, modify all the parameters and it'll redraw the frame. So um, here you go. This is it calculating live. I'm also recording, so. Uh, things might get a little wonky, but you get the idea. You can essentially manipulate the frame as needed and um, it'll output a result that you can then make. Um, nothing too crazy. So let's go here and so it's really ECR. There you go. We're back to our normal frame here. Um, so you can input all these variables. There's a couple check values, uh, so you can make sure that your fork length is correct and things like that. Some special features to help manipulate that to get closer to the original geometry that you're trying to copy, if that's your baseline. And um, you know things like your tire and rim size, crank set size, um, a lot of weird, crazy features, and they're controlled by these little modules. You know that essentially like draw circles and build geometry based off of that. Um, and then ultimately we start to accumulate that geometry and actually flesh it out um, so you can have, let's see if I can actually get something to display. Here we go. So we'll grab a piece. So right now I click that geometry and that just corresponds to this part of the frame here. And then I also have it set up so that it actually will measure the length of that uh, section that you need. For these curve sections, we'll have to do some double checking here because I actually have not. This will be the first time I'm actually building a frame. Um, but this value should be correct, and that's the actual effective length that we need to cut. And from there, 
there'll be some subtracted sections to get around that curve. Uh, for the, you know, the straight tubes in the front, it's way more straightforward. Uh, we're just cutting a length and then figuring out the intersection points and trimming it from there. So for example, the bottom tube lower um, here is at 26 inches. So we can highlight that member. It's this piece here. And obviously there's some overlap, but yeah, that's going to be 26.13 inches long effectively. And from there, we'll be able to find out the length to the intersections. So there you go. Um, that's generally the output. And right now this is all being done in Grasshopper. So none of this is quote unquote real, but this is the export feature. It uh, caps everything, makes it into a solid, and that allows you to do like Boolean intersections and then get your output geometry later for when we have to start cutting the uh, diagonals and angles for the tubing. So hopefully that makes sense. But for right now, really, it's just going to be chopping things down to length. Um, and then, yeah, we'll take it from there. So I can't see a chat. Let's see. Anything in there? Nothing. As I expected. We'll see if we can get more people to come in here at some point. There you go. Have a pretty picture to look at. I'm going to start chopping things up. Um, so, yeah, cool. So right now I'm just setting my saw stop to an inch and a half. This is a very, very cheap bandsaw, but I think it'll do the job. So I'm not gonna stress over it too much. So for the first part, we're gonna double check. Let's see, let's find an example tube that's pretty short. So that way we can get our geometry down. So 18 and a half inches, my ruler. more than enough and this is 24 inches wide right now where I snap it so I think that it's actually gonna work for almost all of our tubes uh, so I'm just gonna cut it from this edge and just start working from there but after I cut the first strip I'm gonna verify the dimensions and yeah raise that just a little bit. Should be good. I'll get a little more light on there. This is definitely a work in progress, so if you can't see much, we'll try and fix that in the, in the future. So if you really want to help out, you could fund me at some point, and uh, we can get some more webcams and stuff like that, so we can actually see what the heck we're doing. That's going to be really important when we get to the actual composite layup and everything like that. I think I started off a little wonky there, but we'll figure that out. It is also not going to be perfectly square, and I know it. The idea is that we'll hand carve things later. So we'll find that. But that is square enough for the girls I did, as they say. But yeah, we're just cutting pink foam strips. <laughs> it's not that exciting. We're gonna need a bunch of them now. Okay, let's see here. 
what's some other dimensions we need? So 18, 18, 21. Think the longest, yeah, 20, 20, 20, sorry, yeah, 26. Let's do 27, 29. Let me double check to make sure that we can cut that longest strip. So for one of, so for the top tube, I'm gonna have to cut like a longer piece. We'll take those a little later. But it sounds like. Close that again. 24. So we can cut at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of the components just from these strips. So I gotta cut seven more of these. That's seven of our pieces right there. So we have a big bundle of foam now. That's pretty fun. So cool. And then like let's figure out the next longest step that we're gonna need. So because I'm getting messages, let's see here. So we have one that's going to be 26, one that's 28, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, we only have those two outliers. So we have one that's going to be 29 inches and one that's going to be 27 inches nominal. We'll cut that down. Cut that from. How much chunks do I want to use here? How light that this one's going to be for most of the bulk components. It's 48 inches. Like we'll have one tube. I was a little bit damaged to it already. One thing I noticed already as well is my bandsaw is moving. 
and I was dragging the material through it. So I'm going to secure it down now. This is why maker spaces are useful because you don't have to be dealing with all this nonsense all the time. <laughs> Pretty nice. But this virus is certainly slowing things down. But we're still going to get work done. Alright. So we're going to cut two strips out of this sucker. Definitely got some wiggly cuts out of that. You can see or this bowed. Yeah. Need to get maybe a table extension at some point. But this will do. And this also has some blunted ends. We'll cut those off. So I think that what I'm gonna do first is yeah, just start prepping these so that I can get them cut down. We'll mark some right angles. And this is just to prepare this material and cut off the extra scraps. Because I don't want to be dealing with that later. Forget about it. So now I'm going to start going through and cutting things down to length. Let me see if this is still chugging away. It looks like it is. So first one's going to be 20.46. So let's see what that's going to be. And that is the top right T. Or what am I saying? Top right, that's probably top right left, excuse me. Jeez. Let's not label that wrong. I found my Sharpie too. 
everything. And we'll cut the angles a little bit later. Right now I'm just chopping them down to size. Set this aside. Now to the next one. So it's top left, and it's going to be the same. So I'm actually going to use this part as a reference for the next one, so that they are identical to one another. Okay. And of course, this is Home Depot Premium. Foam, so it's got dents and dings at the wazoo on it. So, truthfully, not expecting miracles out of it. Like I already said this, but I'm saving all the scrap and that's going to be used to essentially like create handmade fillets and things. I'm going to get these big tubes out of the way in a minute. So 18.52, let's say. Yeah, let's say 18.51. So there's a hair over. Really, I need to find a precise way to do this. But I'm already kind of assuming that this first frame is just going to be for trial. I might not even put in the bottom brackets and stuff. Or I might just carve them by hand with the expectation that they're not going to be as good as what I'm going to buy eventually. Um, because I am going to buy my bottom bracket inserts and my head tube insert and things like that. Um, for everything else though, I'll make it myself, but where the diameters are really important and there's like press fits and things, I'm going to rely on someone else. 
especially whenever we're going to be mating metal to composite parts because that's going to be where this is going to fail. Like almost guaranteed is from galvanic corrosion or from things loosening up over time, uh, which is a really common problem with press fit bottom brackets. I'm not going to do a threaded fit. Um, and yeah, it's kind of crazy. So, but uh, we can get into the details of that maybe in another session, hopefully like during an actual like Q and A uh, when I'm not cutting foam. is actually the bottom so as I'm sure you can tell this is a work in progress and double check this too yep. So this specific version of the script is not available right now on Hackaday. I'm sure by just watching this, you could reverse engineer it, but this is like some of the secret sauce right now, but I'll probably release it a little bit later. So again, this is the same length um, as the other side. So I'm just gonna copy it. I think I accidentally cut an extra. So I need to cut these 20.5. Whoops. Oh man, yeah, I messed this up pretty good already. Good thing it's all written in Sharpie. cut three of the bottoms <laughs> I need to cut two of the 20.46 so that's gonna be just a hair challenging but I need to cut one more extra then and I'm gonna do that right now before I forget
that one a little bit jammed, so wouldn't be expected that. Like surprised if that's out true. That looks like it's actually too bad though. There's a little notch cut in it, and it's not gonna matter for this piece anyway. So whatever. It's all done. Let's move on. This is the first of hopefully many. So we've got all of these, the bottom, tri the back triangle effectively. So all of this geometry has now been cut, except that we need to cut the angles and things like that, but that'll uh, happen a little bit later. So it's the next step. <laughs> all right, so now on to the uh, front triangle and the seat post. So first things first. So we have one that's 26.13. So I think that's gonna be one of these long pieces. I'm gonna do this on the floor. I don't really have a big enough table for this right now that you can see. And this is, the scrap from this is almost long enough to actually make um, another component. So I'm gonna try and do a really shallow angle cut in the throat. And that way we can reuse this later for other components. But before I forget, this is the bottom tube lower. Let's hope we're not wasting materials all the time. Did I already lose? Nope, there we go. Let's figure out what's the smallest cut I can kind of get away with here, or whether I should just use a separate saw entirely, which is what I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna just use a full saw, because we got one. And then we'll clean that cut up. And then now we're going to do the top tube lower is this piece. That one's 22.87, so 22.9 more or less. And I'm gonna use one of these smaller sections for that. I say 22.9.
Kevlar. It's going to take probably a couple days, like broken up. So that's why I'm labeling everything just so I don't lose what the heck I've done and what I haven't done. The so next piece is going to be the bottom to upper, and that's 28.62. So that's this piece. And I know that people who have maybe like looked or examined bicycle design before are going to look at this crazy looking frame and uh, think that it's wrong or that it's like overkill or something like that. Well, I definitely want to go overkill for the first frame that I make because I don't want it to collapse. Um, so that's why I'm kind of going with this configuration. I'm probably going to subtract this member, uh, this region at least, uh, just to get more tire clearance and because I think it's going to look way better. But other than that, I'm probably going to leave it as it is. Uh, might cut out this little small section here as well. Um, in the renderings that are kind of previewed and the announcements for this program, you can see what I'm talking about. It'll also be on the Hackaday page at some point. So anyways, going back to this 28.62. And again, I'm doing this off camera just because it's a longer piece and I need my hands and measuring instruments free. 28.62 and this is the bottom tube upper. I know why they put these little splits in the foam core, just so it's easier for contractors to split on the field and things like that to like standardize length. But I really wish that, you know, that wasn't a thing. But I feel like it just adds in some variability to the material. Notice it's a little bit too big for the throat again. So I'm gonna cut it with a saw, hand saw, and then clean it up from there. And yeah, I'm using a full saw to cut foam. <laughs> right. So all that's left now is the top two upper, this piece and the seat tube which really is uh, the seat like tube holder, I would say, because we're actually gonna do like an insert, um, which is kind of weird, but I, I think it's gonna work well. All right, so top two upper is 21.86. That's too short.
Heat 2 is 18.3. Okay, this is long enough. Yeah. This is one of the scraps from the longer strip, so I'm just going to go ahead and use this because it's already uh, cut to a pretty short length. So 18.3. And it's a nice clean number for one. Really, actually making this completely in metric, but I haven't metricized the uh, script yet. Right now, it just works for inches because it has boundary layers to it, so you can't make things too big or too small. It's kind of like an automatic uh, check system. But in order for me to do it for the uh, metric system, I have to like build in different boundaries. This really means cranking a bunch of numbers, but. I've been just building the script and perfecting as it is, so uh, I felt like it was too premature for that. So, plus, this is going to be a sloppy operation, anyways. And I know that, at least the first couple times around. So, I figured inches, nice and sloppy. Um, let's not over get overly complicated. But it will change, trust me. <laughs> All right, so that's actually all of the pieces. It's pretty crazy. We did that in what? 45 minutes, not even. But the angles have to be cut, and that's going to require a bunch of measuring and things like that. So uh, that'll take a little bit longer. And I don't even know if I want to do that on screen. But I mean, I said I was going to do this until four, so I might as well. But let's see what the stack looks like so far. Let's see what a bicycle frame made out of foam consists of. Ah. This is our bike frame. It's beautiful. A bunch of foam blocks of varying lengths. Now we gotta cut angles and shit into them. So, to start figuring out those angles, you're probably gonna see my ugly face for a while. How bad do I look? Let's see here. I don't look too bad. Okay, that's working. So uh, first we have a geometry set. So we're gonna go over to our exporter, which is this end piece. And we'll click bake, cool, it's done. And we're gonna shift to a shaded view. And then I'm actually gonna cut out of uh, the grasshopper script. So this is what it looks like uh, essentially as a solid. So you can see how there's individual pieces here, uh, where the intersection is with the head tube, for example. You know, there's gonna be some hand sculpting involved here, for sure. So let's just start with like some big pieces um, and work from there. So let's say we're gonna cut the top tube here. So what we'll do is we'll go Boolean, split, and eventually I'm gonna do this automatically, but you kind of have to know what pieces you want to eliminate and where. And then I might as well, I'm actually gonna cut out this section here. So I'm just gonna leave this entire continuous length. So you really just need to know this portion. Another interesting thing is that by alternating the frame designs, but using the same overall geometry, just the negatized components. So like right now, we're gonna cut this part out, but maybe next time around, we're gonna use this and um, we can, you know, cut these sections out. But what I'm saying is that overall, we can probably get away with using the scrap as essentially the next frame's subcomponent, but they're gonna be split members instead of like solid ones. So I guess we'll see how that turns out, but I think I should at least give it a shot at some point. So first things first here, we have 
align. We'll go to standard. Um, and I'm just going to yeah. go that line is 18.23 inches. So that means, and this is the top tube upper. Is this not even labeled? Of course it's not. A one piece, there we go, not labeled. So like I was saying, well, and also this little highlight feature is from Bubble, um, if you're curious. So 18.23 is essentially that intersection point, and then we'll draw another line in a minute. That's gonna be from here to here. So 18.23 on one side, and then Eleven point fifty one on the other. So we'll pick an end, which is going to be this end effectively. We'll measure from that, and that will give us our two intersection points. And we'll just draw a line between the two. So this is eighteen point twenty three for the tops. I said it was a 11.51 from the bottom. You have to make sure you start from the same end. So once we have a working frame design, the good thing with this is we'll just be able to copy like an initial template. So essentially I'll cut a dummy frame tubing all the sections and from that we'll use that to dissect a bigger sheet. Once we know we have something that works. Right now this is the first time around so I'm going to be wasting a lot of material and generating a lot of offcuts and things like that. So don't freak out, I know you're feeling bad for the phone. So much wasted foam. And there we go. I just drew our angle. If I really wanted to, I could have like an angle finder function built into the script. And then from there, um, you know, it could just tell me the output angles and I have a handy dandy little angle finder which would effectively allow us to use that. Hopefully this should look exactly like that thing you see on your screen right there. So we have our top tube upper cut now. Uh, so that gives us that section minus a bunch of pieces. And then we have our angle scrap as well. 
We'll put that aside. That piece is done. Let's move on to another one. Let's shift back over into shaded. So let's say we want, this piece is gonna be a little trickier at some point, but this guy needs to get cut too. We're gonna ignore this. It's really just gonna get cut by this piece. And then, yeah, we'll figure out that a little bit later, I think. But we'll cut here first. So we'll go Boolean split. And we'll cut it with this bottom tube. And then that gives us this piece. So from the end, we'll measure again. Hopefully you're getting the gist of this by now. And then we'll draw another line. I'm gonna need a coffee break in a second here. So, there you go. So we'll measure this line. So that's 22.23. This is the top tube lower. That's going to be this piece we're going to cut. And again, that dimension is going to be 22.23. And then bottom extent is going to be yields that top frame section. Um, we'll figure out the intersection with the seat post and all that nonsense. Um, I guess we could just do that now, but it's some pretty complicated nonsense over there. I'm not really sure I want to do it just yet, so we're just going to set this aside. set aside a box too for all the scrap all right so we got that let's say uh, we want to do how many want to do this we're gonna leave this member intact and maybe I'll get this piece through some other method maybe I didn't even need to cut that truthfully so how do I want to do this? We'll say it's going to get cut for sure by this. How do I extend that maybe? What I'll do is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to extrude
Looks like there's gotta be an easier way to select the surface. There we go. And we'll just boop that out to there. That way we have a nice clean cut. And that's two pieces, so we'll split with that. Oh, actually, we just can split it with this. What am I thinking? Yeah, we're going to leave this void. So we'll just cut that off entirely. All right, so we'll do a Boolean split with this. We'll split it with this guy. So we got our nice clean piece here. And, well, yeah, I don't know what I want to do with that part yet right there, but really what's going to happen, you know, so we'll do that part first, and then we're going to split it again using this member, so it's going to continue through like an arc of sorts. So that first piece, we'll reference that. So, go to standard, draw some lines. I know that was probably really confusing for a second. Yeah. So, one is going to be 21.72. That's going to be the bottom tube upper. So, when I say in. And using the same line, I'm going to calculate the intersection. Let's see. Well, do with this piece. So that's going to get split again. I don't want to do this. So we want to keep this piece here. 
I want it to extend all the way down. And this part can go missing. How do I want to do this? I can cut out this gap, or I can just cut this part out. See, I, I did the, some dissection work on the other part earlier, or on an earlier design. And I hadn't really decided I wanted to do this yet, so you're watching me figure it out. But let's say we got this, and we just want to add that essentially. Do I even want to do that? I mean, I guess we can just leave this as it is for right now. We are going to have to figure out all this crazy intersection nonsense here. And you see why I want to leave this? Because we that way we have some bottom bracket shell area that we can start building off of. <sighs> Let's see. Let's see. I think that got that section. We got that. I think that right now I'm gonna just gonna start maybe just loosely taping together the frame just to get an idea of what it looks like. Wish that I had my little head tube here though as a support. But I guess we can figure out how long from that top edge. So from here to here is eleven point one inches effectively. So Okay. So I see now that I probably should not have cut that section because now I'm going to have to introduce that bottom part. So now we know for a fact, just thinking about this, that this member is going to have to be there. That's okay. It is the first piece. Fuck it. We're learning. But I could have just left that probably uncut or it could have extended this piece even further into the head tube yeah and then that would have worked as well and then we could have just ditched this entire bottom section see this is why it's useful to do this once figure out what the heck we're doing but now we'll have a different interface for sure so now I want to figure out what that's going to be so we'll split it with this. So go all fully in split. We're gonna split this with this. And that's gonna give us some interesting pieces. So for one, we're gonna measure starting down there. And so we'll create a line to here. And then we'll create a line so 
I want to be 16, seven point seven and a quarter, and sixteen and something. Let's see if a piece lying around that'll work for that. Looks about the right length. That makes sense. I can't use this piece. What am I thinking? This is good. Cut this guy. One, two, upper. That's 16.63. I clean this up really quick for Excuse my short-term memory.
I'll do it again from this end. Or a clean. I'm just writing a little note saying this goes to the head. So I say seven point two four should be on the bottom here. Two point six And in a minute or so, I'll show you what the frame looks like. I have it lying down on the ground right now. How are you getting weird? How are you doing? So you gotta figure out how far that goes from the end here. So to get this lined up, I gotta do some further measuring. So I gotta. It's from, this is from cut to here. So, pretty weird, but. Point 0.92 inches.
Looks like a pretty direct copy. Here, I'll show you. Hopefully this makes sense. I guess I'll have to see how this looks like in the video later. But there you go. That's part of the frame on the ground right there. Alright. So, let's see what comes next. So, we got that section cut out. And... I guess we could use this little bottom piece, the extension. Or wait, no, we already have that. So we could add in this piece. But honestly, looking at it, I think that's one of those things where we're just going to want to sculpt that by hand. And that's just one less junction we have to worry about. So I'm just going to delete it. There you go. I have a nice clean intersection right there. So now we can figure out that little angle cut, uh, corner cut, and then we can more or less leave our head tube alone. It's gonna have some notches cut out of it as well. Can ignore this piece, that's not gonna be there. Can ignore that piece, that's not gonna be there. There you go. I'll have to cut this chunk. And I think that's my cue to probably end this. So I'm signing off.